And so how did you, I mean, naturally you're very humble. You're not, I'm going to talk about your results, but you know, um, uh, obviously you've, you, you on a personal level with your portfolios have exceeded the benchmark by hundreds of basis points, but most notably when you were working with Bill Miller, you guys actually set the record for consecutive years in beating the S&P. I think it was 15 years straight. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that in a world in which you kind of ignore what the market does? How did that happen? Do you think that could ever be recreated or exceeded? Like, um, you know, just it's, it just doesn't feel like it jives with this notion of sort of conventional value investing. Yeah, well, it, yeah, great question, and several several parts there to, to to peel back. First of all, let's let's get the record straight. It was not my track record; that was Bill Miller's track record. He was managing his value trust portfolio, uh, which was a famous mutual fund that beat the market fifteen years. I was managing the Leg Mason Growth Trust. Now we worked as a team, and we're we're colleagues, and there was overlap in the portfolio. But I I was moving more Buffett S large cap type growth names, and Bill, you know, was more I guess you know, eclectic and how we thought about the stocks. Um, the fact that he beat the market 15 years in a row, um, first of all, maybe this will deflate it, but he, we did point out to him, if the market uh, year end, if the year end for the market was November 30th, I think he only beat the market like nine out of 15 years. So there was some <laughs> luck in the calendar. I mean, there was no, you know, the fact that, you know, his, his price performance was calculated on December 31st, not November 30th, made a difference. Now, right. it, I remember, you know, he would shut down trading unless it was an emergency. He would shut down trading in the last two weeks of December because he didn't want to be accused of, you know, you know, manipulating the portfolio for those last few basis points. And so we'd, we'd actually shut down most of our trading by, you know, mid-December. Hmm. Um, but what becomes interesting about Bill Miller, and, and this kind of speaks to, you know, liberal arts investing, was his evolution of his thinking, the evolutionary nature of the thing. Because he, he started out as Ben Graham. Low PE, low price to book. And if you go back to the original value trust, which was launched in you know, 1982, it was a classic Ben Graham portfolio. And I think they beat the market. Him and Ernie Keeney were managing the portfolio. I think they beat it four out of five years. And then after that, they ran into a string of, of hard uh, performance where I think they underperformed three out of five years. And so Bill kind of really started to dig down in it. And, and that's where he then evolved to the second stage, which was the Buffett stage, which is it has nothing to do with price earnings ratios. Valuation has nothing to do with PE. There's not one academic uh, textbook anywhere on the planet Earth that says low PEs are undervalued and high PEs are overvalued. Hmm. It has everything to do with the cash earnings and the return on invested capital. And so when Bill got to that point in the early 90s, he was able to start to move the value trust from classic Ben Graham low accounting factors into better businesses, high cash returns, and high returns on invested capital. And so that started in 92. That was when his track record began. He was already moving into the second stage of value investing. Then where he then absolutely killed it was by 95, 96, having spent time at the Santa Fe Institute, which we'll talk about if you want. Uh, he was already on board with uh, these new economy stocks. And, and even though Buffett um, did not buy technology and, and in those early years, and all the value guys said, well, if Buffett's not buying it, it can't be value. Bill had already moved to the third level of value investing, the third stage of value investing, which is understanding the economic returns of technology companies. And he bought Dell Computer. I think Dell was the single best performing stock in the 1990s, mm -hmm. went up 8,000%. I think Bill got it. I think Bill's returns were around three or 4,000% on Dell. You know, he bought America online, uh, killed it there, moved out in time. Um, we were the original IPO with uh, Jeff Bezos on Amazon. So we were already in there. And, mm -hmm. and Google, when Google came out, uh, we were the largest underwriter of that auction of Google. So he, he moved into technology in the second half of the 1990s. And had he not done that, there was no way that he could have had that track record because mm -hmm. from 96 to 1999, it, it was all growth and technology. And he had not made that move. He wouldn't have had the track record. Now, interestingly, he pared back those bets and still outperformed the market in 2000, 2001, and 2002 mm -hmm. based upon his valuation methodology. So a lot, right. of, a lot of tech went down but if you were doing good valuation work, you just didn't go down as much. 